you, uh, Dr. Eastman. Um, hard question, I think, and I would understand if you'd uh, not want to answer it, but uh, in hindsight, was it obligatory that President Trump uh, walk away and, uh, and cede power to Joe Biden? Was there any other course of action that could have been taken uh, earlier in the, in the process? Thank you. Um, so I'm going to blame Rip Van Winkle in part for this. Uh, I'll tell this story. It's a fun story. I was in Philadelphia by chance on the weekend after the election. That was ground zero for the Trump legal efforts in Pennsylvania. Um, somebody heard that I was there. They were the, 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 the major law firm that was supposed to be coordinating had just been bullied out of the process by all the rest of their clients threatening to pull their accounts if they continued to represent Trump. And so people are just scrambling. And this was going on all over the country. No major law firm would, would take on any of the matters. So I'm asked to bring over, I'm an election law specialist and a constitutional specialist. And the key issues going to the Supreme Court are going to be these constitutional ones. Can the Secretary of State change the rules, or does it have to be the legislature? Right? And uh, so I'm over there to meet with them, and we're going to start revising the complaint that they had planned to file. And somebody heard that I was, they you know, had them rethinking their complaint, and they wanted a press conference that afternoon, and they kicked me out of the room. I was there long enough to catch COVID, though. And three weeks later, I wake up from that little nightmare, and it's like, what has happened with this litigation chaos? There was, what you needed was a major law firm with multi-state, like, like the multi-state asbestos litigation, with that kind of infrastructure, multi-state infrastructure, massive resources, paralegals, experts, all of that, and it needed to be well-funded. It was well-funded, but the n money never went to the people who were trying to do the litigations. Most of those litigations were driven by folks just needing to do it on themselves because nothing else was happening. It was unfortunately very discombobulated, and one has to suspect that the point people at the RNC that was the recipient of all of the election-related uh, litigation money that came in saw dollar signs for future use and didn't want to do it, whether, whether they just wanted the money for future use or they were happy to see Trump go you know, into the sunset. Um, uh, but that, which is why I think two weeks ago Trump ordered him not to be using his name in their fundraising. Um, they, they, but, but it was discombobulated. The lawyers that were doing those cases did a phenomenal job in the short time frame and the utter lack of resources they had. I don't want to throw anybody under the bus for that. But, but it, was, it was extraordinary. And then you also had some charlatans who were out there raising money on their own to file suits that were just frivolous. And so a bunch of them, by, by simple voters, you know, voters don't have a particularized injury to bring lawsuits on an election challenge. It's got to be the candidate. Right? And so you know, a bunch of dozens of those kind of cases were filed and then either dismissed or withdrawn, and that contributes to that false number. Well, 90 courts have looked at this and rejected it all. Well, if somebody files a suit that doesn't have standing and it gets rejected, that's not a rejection of the evidence. That's a rejection of the person who brought it. Right? And so those kind of things, that discombobulation, I think, contributed to it. Should Trump have conceded? No, because I think he won. Um, should he have taken more extraordinary steps there's a famous line in the Declaration of Independence. I think this was an abuse of our democratic Republican system of government. Um, I'm not prepared yet to say we've crossed the Rubicon line on that. The Declaration of Independence says we will tolerate abuses while they remain tolerable. But at some point, they cease to be tolerable. And if I thought we can't fix this with the 80 million concerted effort, then I would say we'd cross that line. But I'm not prepared to go there yet. There were some that think that we'd cross that line and we're urging, urging you know, all sorts of things. But I wasn't there yet. And I, I still have a firm view, belief in the rule of law, and ultimately the character of the American people to fix this problem.